All right, so I'm gonna be showing how to replace the screen on this 13 inch MacBook Pro. This is a 2018 model A1989. All right, so you're gonna need a lot of screwdriver bits. The first one we're gonna need is a PH5 or Pentalobe 1.2. All right, we'll also need a Pentalobe uh, 0.8 or P2, all right? And then we'll also need a T8 or Torx 8. We'll need a T5, Torx 5. We'll also need a T3 or Torx 3. And in some cases, we'll need a T4 or Torx 4. Um, now you wanna get a screwdriver set. You don't wanna just buy these individual screwdrivers because there are some cases where the screwdrivers won't be made the same way and you might need to use a different size. All right, anyways, we're gonna use the Pentalobe 1.2 or P5 screwdriver first and remove all the bottom screws. You wanna keep all the screws in order. The way I do that, I put them flat side down like this in the pattern I remove them. So there's two back here uh, by the hinges and then there's four down here. If this video helps you out, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others so that they can learn how to upgrade and repair their devices as well. If it helped you save a bunch of money, please consider contributing a little to the channel. Every little bit helps and allows me to continue making these videos for a living. Right, so anyways, we're gonna remove all the screws. Um, sometimes it helps to use a suction cup on this model because there's this vent here. You might be able to do it without it. And if you don't have a suction cup, you can also use a piece of tape, all right, or two pieces of tape. Okay, so first thing you wanna do, of course, is to make sure the thing is off. So right now you can see the crack lines here. And if I run my fingers over here, you can actually see where the crack is. So I'm gonna do is I'm gonna press and hold the power button until this turns off. You can also tell by trying to press the trackpad. If it stops clicking, then you know it's off. All right. All right, next thing we're gonna do, we're gonna pop the bottom cover off. So the way I do that, because I'm not using a suction cup, let me show you here. So you can go on this edge here, and once you lift up slightly, you can get underneath here, okay? Then you'll work your way down the edge, and I push, I like to push with my thumb down here and pull up with my other fingers, okay? And you can see it pops out like that. I'm gonna go all the way around to the other side and continue the same thing. There are clips in the middle, but usually once you go around to pop the other side, all the middle clips also pop up already. Okay, so we're done with the P5 or Pentalobe uh, 1.2 for now. All right, let's go ahead now and take the bottom cover off. So now that you have this gap here, what I like to do is I like to get my hand in there and then hold it with my palm. This piece can be very difficult to remove, so you have to grab here, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna push down on this. I like to wrap my fingers over the back so it doesn't fall over, so we're just gonna do that. Okay, it can be very difficult to remove. If it doesn't come out, you're gonna wanna go to the other side and do the same thing. And if it still doesn't come out, just keep working your way left, right, left, right, and eventually you should be able to wiggle it and pop it out. All right, so here you can see we got the bottom cover off. And I actually have a customer here now, so I'm gonna have to go see them real quick and I'll be back, all right? I'll see you guys in a bit. I'll actually also clean the dust out here while I'm there so you can see there's quite a bit of dust here. Okay, see you guys in a bit. All right, I'm back, so let's go ahead and see. You can see this is a lot cleaner. Um, this is gonna be a relatively quick uh, video because I've actually done a lot of these already. Um, and right now the customers kind of need their computer back somewhat quick. So let's go ahead and do this. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the T5 or Torx 5 screwdriver bit. All right, let me organize my screwdriver bits just so I can go quickly. All right, we're gonna go ahead and peel this battery cover thing off. You wanna carefully, slowly do this, okay? Make sure you're not ripping up this cable that's underneath. Let me actually zoom in a bit here, okay? All right, slowly, carefully peel that up. And there you go, we got this out. Okay, then we're gonna go ahead and disconnect this cable here. Just peel back the top plastic piece, flip this latch up. Um, it's best to use your fingernails. Some people use tools and end up ripping that thing out, so you wanna be very careful. Once you do that, grab the cable, okay? And then kind of just wiggle and pull it, here we go. All right, so we got that cable disconnected. Then we're gonna go ahead and remove the T5 or Torx 5 screw under here. All right, now that we got that out, we're gonna lift this tab up slightly. Okay, just like this. All right, now that it's no longer connected, that's the battery connector. We're gonna open up the computer and then we're gonna press and hold the power button for about 15 seconds. This will drain any residual power and make it a lot safer to work on, all right? So we're gonna give it about 
a few more seconds. Excuse me. Okay, so that's been about 15 seconds. Let's go ahead and close this up. All right, next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove all the screws over here. Since we're already using the T5 screwdriver, I'm gonna just remove the T5 screws first, but um, usually you wanna do the other screws to make it a little bit uh, easier, but I'm gonna do the T5 screws just so I don't have to keep switching screwdrivers, okay? So there's four screws along this uh, board here that's holding the screen um, assembly in place. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove those four screws. All right, once we remove those four, we're also gonna remove the one over here holding the wireless antennas down. Okay, and you wanna get the wireless antennas out of the way. Um, to get these wireless antennas out, you just go from the tails and pull them straight up, just like this, okay. All right, again, if you want a little more detail, you can watch some of my other videos. I made, I did this kind of repair multiple times. Okay, so now we got that cable out, and I think we got all the T5 screws out. Okay, so next we're going to switch over to the T4, uh, actually the T3, okay? So the T4, sometimes some screws will be slightly bigger, but it's pretty rare. So we might not need the T4, I just get it just to be safe, all right? So we're going to use the T3 screwdriver to remove the two screws here, holding this plastic piece in place. Again, you want to keep all these screws in order because they can be different size, shape, and lengths, and if you mix them up, you can damage the computer. All right, now you can lift this up and go ahead and pull that plastic out. Okay, um, same thing on the other side, but I'm going to go from left to right. Let's go ahead now and remove the two screws holding this metal plate in place. Depending on your replacement, it might already have that metal plate on it, so you might not have to remove these screws. Um, but most of the time it's not going to come with that metal plate. I'm not sure why so keep that in mind You can take that metal plate out and transfer it over right. We're going to remove the two um, T3 screws down here. These are holding a spring loaded connector um, I'm not sh really sure what this piece is for. I feel like Apple just put it there to make it harder to work on um, You'll see why in a bit. All right, let's go ahead and move over here and then we'll take out these screws. I might have to go for a bit, so let's go ahead and finish this up real quick. Okay. All right, we got those two screws out. We can go ahead and lift this metal plate out. All right, we're gonna go ahead and take these two screws out. There's a lot of screws in this thing. All right, and you wanna be careful not to damage any of these components. This cable connects underneath the motherboard. So if you damage that cable, you're gonna have to take the entire motherboard or logic board out. Okay, so be very careful. Oh no, a fly got inside. All right, so we got those. We're gonna go ahead and remove this little piece. All right, we're gonna go over here and remove these two, just like the other side. I might have to stop here so I can go and I'll be back. All right, get this screw out, there we go. All right, get this piece out and then we'll remove these two. Okay, once I remove the other plastic plate, um, I'm gonna stop and then I'll be back to finish the rest, okay? So let's go ahead and get this last screw out. There we go. All right, and then we'll get this plastic thing. All right, go, get those two out. All right, and I'll see you guys in a bit. I'm gonna go real quick and I mean, you'll probably see me just come back right away. All right, so anyways, see you guys soon. All right, so I'm back. Okay, so we got all those little screws out. All right, let's see, did I miss anything? We disconnected the battery already, drained it. Okay, we got all that. Okay, we do have to disconnect this cable, so let's zoom in here. And all right, let's go ahead and remove that. So the way you do that, again, normally if you leave the T5 or Torx 5 screws there, then you don't need to hold this down, but I'm gonna hold this board down, <clears throat> and then I'm just gonna use my fingernail and pop this connector up, okay, just like that. We're gonna slightly push it back. You don't wanna fold it all the way over because you can damage the screen cable that way. Okay, next thing we're gonna do is remove the wireless antenna. So we're gonna switch on over to the, um, let's see here, we have the four, three, okay. So we're gonna switch on over to the P2 or Pentalobe 0 0.8, and we're gonna remove these screws here. Okay, so let's go ahead and remove all those screws. 
you want to have a good screwdriver. Um, <clears throat> I'm not sponsored or anything, but the iFixit bits are really good. They hold up really well. There are other cheaper options. If you want, I can uh, point you to a cheaper set. Um, but for the quality, um, these bits seem to hold up a lot better. I've used some other sets that hold up decent, but over time they break a lot easier. And you don't want to work on a device with a bad screwdriver because then you can actually destroy the screws and then it'll be um, close to impossible, if not just very difficult to remove them. So keep that in mind. Um, sometimes it pays to just spend a little more for quality tools okay <clears throat> usually with tools screwdrivers and things like that um, drills other stuff i found that it's best to spend the money when you buy the tools and then not have to worry about it when you actually use them so all right and also um, by doing this yourself you're saving a lot more than what the tools cost so it's worth it all right. <clears throat> okay, so we almost got all the screws out. Again, hopefully you guys are keeping all the screws in order. That's very important because if you mix them up, you can damage your computer, okay? All right, so we got all those screws out. <clears throat> now we're going to lift out the wireless board. I'm gonna have to zoom out a bit so you can see better, okay? All right, so this can be a little bit difficult to remove. You have these air vents here. I lift it up there a little bit so that I can now grab the side here. We're gonna do that on both sides and we're gonna kind of lift it and kind of wiggle it and pull it. And there you go. This little piece down here in the middle will pop out. All right, then we gotta get these wireless antennas out. Just kind of wiggle this. Um, getting this back in can be a little tricky. So keep that in mind. Um, Apple designed this in a way that makes it more difficult. Um, I like to kind of straighten these antenna wires out a little bit to make it easier to put back later. Um, but you can always do that once you're trying to install it. You'll see why in, in when you go to put this back. It's a little tricky. All right, so now that we got all of that out, we got this <clears throat> screen cable out. Also these um, little spring-loaded things here. All right, you can see we got these pieces out. <clears throat> all right. Next, what we're going to do, we're going to, let's see if I can show this. I have to kind of put this at the edge of my desk. All right. You're going to get to see my legs. All right. A little bit. <laughs> Got lots of junk all over my desk, but yeah, ignore that. That's not part of the repair. Anyways, what you're going to do, you open up the screen um, all the way. All right. Until it stops. And then you lay the um, keyboard down on the edge of your desk with the screen hanging over, all right? We're gonna switch over to a T8 or Torx 8 screwdriver. And we're just gonna remove the six screws holding the hinges in place, okay? So let's go ahead and remove the six screws. All right, just like this. <clears throat> okay. Just like this. All right, so we got those three and then we got these three. And once you get <clears throat> those six out, okay, then what you do is you can let the screen kind of fall down. And then after that, you can kind of go underneath and get these cables up and out of the way. Okay, so now you hold this and then you can go ahead and lift the screen up. It's like now dropped at about 90 degrees kind of wiggle it forward and backwards and sideways and then you can actually pop it out just like this so this is the old screen all right they have a cover on it um, we're just going to set that aside okay let's go ahead and get the replacement screen now all right so it's all wrapped up in bubble wrap so i'm trying to get the bubble wrap off all right I have it all taped up here Let's try and get this tape out. You want to be careful with the screen because all this bubble wrap can generate some static. So make sure you keep yourself grounded, touch something metal before you go ahead and touch things inside the computer. You don't want the static getting in there, all right? That's very important. You can destroy your computer if you're not careful. Okay, 
So next thing we're going to do, you can see uh, every screen they package differently. They package this like that. So we're going to have to peel this clear thing off away from here. Okay. I guess it just tears. Okay. And now we can actually lift these um, cables up just like on the original screen. So you want to get underneath to hold these cables up and out of the way. Okay can be a little bit tricky all right so now that you're holding those oh the screws are kind of flying all over the place get back over there okay so there we go we're going to hold this like that and now drop this into place if the hinges <clears throat> aren't open all the way you can actually use the t8 or torx 8 screwdriver to get in there and then kind of use that to help twist this so this one is a little bit not open all the way so there we go make sure you don't twist it too hard you don't want to break the hinges okay so there we go. Now we're going to go ahead and drop this into place slowly, carefully, <clears throat> just like that. And then hold this, uh, the screen up slightly. So I actually use my legs to kind of rest it on to hold it in place. And then what we're going to do, we're going to now put these screws in. Okay. You don't want to tight, you don't need to tighten them all the way because first we need to make sure everything is aligned properly. So I'm going to get all these screws, um, or at least the two side outer side ones in and then we're going to slowly carefully close the screen <clears throat> okay i've seen a lot of people saying that the touch um, bar doesn't work after replacing the screen i'm not sure why i've yet to run into that issue i had i've seen some reviews on this screen where some people said that issue happens so i guess we'll find out i have a feeling it's um, people are using the screen from the wrong model number um, but anyways, let me <clears throat> peel off this piece here because I don't want to close that inside the screen that can damage the screen. <clears throat> okay, I'm going to slowly, carefully close this. All right, again, very slowly and carefully. Okay, there we go. Now that we got it all closed up, let's go ahead and zoom in. All right, uh, zoom in a bit more. Okay. I'm going to use some red thread locker to hold these hinge screws in place because sometimes when they come loose, they um, get out of alignment or they can actually cause the hinge to break itself. So, all right. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to loosen these screws here. Okay. Just a little bit. Okay. Now that those screws are loosened, I'm going to go along the side edges. All right. And the front and back. Make sure everything is lined up in place. And then you want to try and get this gap here between the this the hinge area at the bottom and the top. Uh, you kind of want to make sure the gap is um, similar. Once you get that, you can go ahead and tighten one of the screws on each side into place. Okay, one there and one here. All right, just like that. Oh, if it's not aligned, you might have to undo the screw again and then kind of get it back aligned okay so if it doesn't stay then we might have to just live with it but let's see as I tighten it okay this one looks okay now so tighten this into place all right good and then we'll tighten this one into place all right, now that we got those two middle screws um, in, we're gonna go ahead and take these screws out and we're gonna add some, a little bit of th uh, thread locker. Some people don't like that I use red thread locker. If you want, you can use the blue kind, um, but the red one, I just put very little and I have I haven't had any issues removing them, so. Okay, so there we go. There we go, very little. I don't know if you can even see. The shiny stuff is the thread locker. It's only on one side and not even a full drop. All right, once we do that, we're just gonna get the screw in. Okay, <clears throat> you can go ahead now and um, get the other screw that we didn't put. Same thing, add a little thread locker. Okay, then we'll go ahead and tighten this down. All right, then we'll take this screw out. And we'll put that in. All right, again, just a little. OK, 
Okay, oops, I don't want to take that one out yet because that's keeping it aligned. Let's go ahead and take this one out. Alright, we'll add some thread locker there. Okay, just like that. Get the other screw. Just a little bit. Okay, tighten that into place. Good. All right, we'll take this one back out. Okay. A little one there. All right, now we got all six hinge screws back into place. All right, let's go ahead and start getting everything else into place. <clears throat> so we're gonna do, we're gonna flip this, rotate this back over. Oh, and this one actually came with the metal brackets there, so I don't have to transfer those over. That's nice. All right, <clears throat> so first thing I'm gonna do is actually put the spring-loaded ones in place. So these you kind of have to rotate the springs to make sure they line up right. Okay, hold that into place. Oh, make sure you switch to the right screwdriver. Back to the T3 or Torx 3. We're done with the T8 for now. I guess for the rest of the video. Um, all right, so we're gonna switch back to the T3 or Torx 3. Get that in. Okay. And then while you're holding this, just go ahead and tighten that into place. <clears throat> okay, get the other screw, and we'll now tighten that one in. Okay, same thing with this side, rotate that over. You can actually see the springs through the bottom there, okay. Hold that in place, and then tighten this down. All right, second one, keep holding that in place and then we'll tighten this down. Okay, there we go. So we've got those four screws. We're gonna get this out of the way, hold this up. Okay, put this down. Okay, we have to now get this um, wireless antenna into place. Okay, let me zoom out a bit so you can see this better. Okay, so this can be a little tricky. We have to kind of thread this through down here. And it helps to use some tweezers for this. So we're gonna try and get this. If it doesn't wanna go, you can actually um, bend the wires a little bit up. You don't wanna do anything too extreme. You don't wanna break the wires, but it helps to kind of curve them, angle them up a little bit. All right, and then get them through there. You can now see one antenna is coming through here. I'm gonna use tweezers to make it easier to get it out. You can use like a little pick, toothpick or needle. Okay, but you can grab these wires up and out. Okay, make sure all of these come up and out. Okay. Just like this, all right. This one is a little stuck, come on. All right, pull that through. Okay, you can actually see this one is coming through now. <clears throat> so we're gonna get this. I made a lot of videos um, replacing the screens on these models. So if this one isn't clear enough, you can watch another one where I actually zoom more in to show this part, but on this one I kind of wanted to show the whole bar so you can see how I'm maneuvering it into place. Okay, so now you can see we got this whole piece into place. Get these screws all lined up, or these screw mounts lined up. Once you get that lined up, you can go ahead and push the center piece down, okay? And then you can test it by trying to pull and you see the center is staying into place. All right, we're gonna now switch back over to the P2, our Pentalobe um, 2 screwdriver, okay? Uh, one of my customers is here, so I'm gonna have to go. But uh, let me go ahead and get these screws in first, at least a couple. So the way I do this is I put the outer edge screw while holding this into place, okay? We're gonna do the same thing with the other one. Okay. Same thing, hold this screw into place and then you can go ahead and tighten that into place. 
All right, so let me go uh, return the computer to my customer real quick, and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Let's go ahead and continue putting this thing back together. All right, so we got the two outer screws for these in. Let's go ahead and get the rest of them in. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Okay. All right, if you want, you can put the outer ones first, so that way you don't have to keep holding it. All right, so let me go ahead and do that one and this one. All right, now that we got the outer screws in, you can go ahead and let go and just continue getting all the rest in. Okay. And also, if you wanna just quickly test the screen, you actually don't have to put all the screws and everything back. The main one is this cable, but uh, the reason I don't tell people to do that is because they'll, they'll, there's more risk they'll mess something up they'll forget to drain the power again before messing with it and then they'll actually fry their computer. So it's it's better just might as well put the whole thing together. If it doesn't work, it doesn't work. Um, but better to do it right than to kind of try and take shortcuts. Okay, so let's go ahead and get all these screws in. there all right we've got all the wireless antenna screws in all right we got these two screws in okay we're done with the uh, p2 or pentalobe 0 0.8 let's go ahead and switch back to the t3 our torx 3 screwdriver and then what we're going to do um, we can go ahead and put the little plastic hinge covers back on. So put that at an angle like that. All right, get that in. Make sure that you put it at that angle. You don't want the plastic to end up on top of the uh, of the this metal piece. Okay, you want that to be outside uh, underneath. All right, so let's go ahead and get those two screws in. Okay. And do the same thing over here get this plastic piece in make sure it goes underneath okay there we go and we'll get these two screws in as well all right there we go all right and just to make it safer i'm actually going to go ahead and put the t5 or torx 5 screws in first to hold the board down. Okay, and these I'm gonna loosely fit first just to make sure everything is lined up properly. Okay, just like that. Get this screw in. Come on, why isn't it lining up right? Oh, I have to slide it over a little. Okay. All right, there we go. That one's in, get the other side. Oh, hopefully you can see I wasn't paying attention to what I was recording. All right, other side, get that screw in. Make sure it lines up. This one's having some weird issues lining up right, but all right, there we go. This one in, same thing, line it up. All right, this will fit. This one, line it up. Okay, and go ahead now and tighten down all four now that we've got everything lined up. Okay, just like that. You don't want to over tighten though. All right, and then the last T5 or Torx 5 screw that we need for this screen part. The only other one is for the battery, but we're gonna put this first. Okay, make sure that is lined up and tighten that in. All right, wireless antennas, just like every other model, except for this one, because it's part of the motherboard, um, you wanna be extra careful, all right? Because if you break that, you can't replace the motherboard part, or you can, but it'll be very expensive. All right, so we're gonna get this lined up. 
So push that into place. You'll know it's lined up because if you try and move it around, you see it stays in place. Then you can go ahead and push it down to click it into place. There we go. And we'll do this for all three. Okay, so this one, same thing. Usually I have to push the back here to kind of make the wire bend a little. And then you can go ahead and push it down. All right, last one. All right, this one's good. And then push it down. And there we go. All right, so now we got all the wireless antennas back in. <clears throat> now we just need to get the last few screws. Let's go ahead and reconnect the LCD connector here. Usually I have to push it down a little bit this way. Okay, and then make sure it clicks in. All right, looks good. You can tell because it's staying flush down. Okay, then we're going to go ahead and take this little bracket, put that back on top. Okay, oops, I need to switch back over to the T3 or Torx 3 screwdriver. And sometimes it helps when, to put this bracket by like holding it up, get the screw in there, and then you can use that to help guide the first screw. Okay, there we go. And you can loosely fit that, there we go. All right, second screw. Get that in as well. Alright, and go ahead and tighten that down. Right, so now the LCD is connected. Okay, then we're going to get the other metal bracket. Okay, and same thing, hold this piece into place, get the screw in. Alright, and tighten that, slowly, carefully tighten that in. Right, so now that we got that one, get the other screw. I'm I just loosely fit it. I didn't tighten it all the way down yet. That way we can move this side around if we need to. Okay, and go ahead now and tighten that down. Okay, now we got that side tightened down. We can do the other side. Tighten that down. Okay. All right. Now we just need to put back the um battery screw okay so we're going to switch back to the t5 or torx 5 screwdriver all right slide this up this part is very important if your battery won't work if you don't connect this right so we're going to get this screw in okay tighten that down there we go now that that screw is tightened into place we're done with the t5 or torx 5 screwdriver we're going to get this piece all right make sure that latch is up Okay, as you can see, I'm peeling this back so you can kind of see what's going on. But basically, we're going to use this piece to help guide that back in. All right, come on, go back in the slot. I'm trying to make it so you guys can see what's happening, but there's underneath here makes it a little bit difficult because there's some sticky stuff there. Okay, so get that lined up and get that into place. Come on. All right, I guess I can't do it while showing you guys, so I'm gonna just do it the way I need to. Okay, get that lined up. Okay, once it's lined up, you can go ahead and push that in. Oh, how come it's not going now? It's being weird. Come on, there we go. All right, so now we got this cable in. Um, I don't know if you can see, but only a tiny bit of the gold is showing. And that's how it should be. All right. Once you get that cable pulled in, slide your finger over the top to latch this plastic piece back down. And then you can go ahead and stick this back on. All right. And then we take this plastic piece back and just put that back on. The way you do is you just line up this little notch with this little thing here. Okay. Center it and then stick that down. Okay. Just like that. All right, and that's pretty much it. Let's go ahead and get the bottom cover back on and then make sure everything is working, okay? And then after that, we just put back the remaining screws. Okay, let's go ahead and get this bottom cover on. So the way you get this bottom cover on, it has to slide back in like this at an angle. Okay, so what I do is I start with one side. It doesn't matter which side. I start with the left, but you can start with either. Okay, once you get this edge here on the side lined up right, okay, 
So you have to start somewhat back, then you can go ahead and slide that up. You can go over to this side, same thing, while holding this down, slide that up. I'm pushing with my thumb here. Okay, then usually this side comes out a little more, so push that back in, and then push that back in. All right, double check both sides look okay. All right, looks good. Then you can go ahead and click everything back into place. Um, now we're gonna test it. We don't have to put these screws back in to test that, so let's go ahead and test it real quick. I'm gonna open this up. All right, we do have to plug the charger in. Without the charger, it's not gonna turn on, so plug that in. So right now, if I'm pushing the trackpad, nothing's happening. If I push the power button, still nothing's happening. So let's go ahead and plug this in. Okay, give it a few seconds. Usually it doesn't happen right away. Make sure I have the right one plugged in. Okay, still nothing. Hmm. Let's flip this charger over. Sometimes I have it upside down and it doesn't work right for some reason. There you go, I heard the charging sound and the Apple logo is coming on. So we should be good to go. I don't know why this trackpad doesn't have a clicking feeling. I don't know if they damaged it or what. The trackpad is working. I don't know if you can see. I can actually move the mouse, but for some reason I don't feel a clicking feeling. So I don't know if they damaged the battery or something or the trackpad, but um, you can see the screen is on. All right, I'm gonna restart this real quick. Okay. It does work, but for some reason, well, but for some reason their trackpad isn't clicking. Um, anyways, after doing this, you do want to do a PRAM and SMC reset if you can. Some models don't work that way, so let's see if we can do it on this one. Control Option Shift on the left side, power button, and no, that didn't work. Let's see if the PRAM reset works. We're going to restart the computer, and then when it's starting up, Command Option PNR. Okay, Command Option PNR, and you can see the screen shut itself off and then it's gonna start itself back up, or usually that's what happens. Okay, so we'll give it a few seconds and it should start itself back up without me touching anything. All right, unless something changed on this model. Yep, okay, so it started itself back up and there we go. All right, so that's pretty much all there is to it. We're just gonna put the screws back in the bottom uh, hopefully this video helped you guys out. Again, if it did, make sure to like, subscribe, share my channel with others. I am going to have to ask for the password to see if the touch bar stuff comes back on. Uh, but other than that, thanks for watching. I'll see you all in the next one. Actually, I'll come back uh, in a bit to see if my customer gives me the password. I'll come back and see if I can show you this working. Um, but other than that, yeah, that's pretty much it. Just get make sure to get the T5 or not the, the P5 or Pentalab 1.2 screws in. All right, I'll see you guys in a bit. All right, so if you're wondering, yes, the touch, um, this thing works, okay? So, oh, why isn't it, there you go. All right, you can see, and then you can use the font, or the brightness. They have stuff open, so I don't wanna like show too much, but you can see, okay? So that works, that works. All right, so touch, touch bar works. All right, so I don't know what people do that cause their touch bar to break. I don't know if it's really their sc the screen that caused the problem, or maybe they touch something wrong, or, uh, my guess is they're getting the wrong model of their screen. You want to make sure that you have the right model and year of your MacBook because it might be the same size, but there's all different years. There's a mid-2017, like early 2017, late 2017. So you want to make sure you get the right model for your laptop. All right, that's it. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all in the next one.